Good morning. Good morning. I'm coming to you from Doers of the Word Baptist Church at 14781 Sperry Road in Newberry, Ohio. I'm Pastor Ernie Sanders. And the title of the message this morning is To Judge or Not to Judge. And how often do you hear, uh, Judge not lest you be judged, or uh, He without sin cast the first stone. It seems like uh, we hear this a lot, especially those of us that are on the streets, street preaching. That's right. And people that uh, want to try to find a way to justify their own sin. And so, what is the position of Christians and judgment? Well, I'm going to be preaching on that this morning, and, and uh, I've gone into this message a little deeper than I've ever heard anybody preach it now. This, this message specifically has got to do with Christians and judgment. Christians and judgment. And we're going to start in Amos chapter 5, <clears throat> verses 1 through 15 this morning. So in Amos chapter 5, starting with verse 1, Hear ye the word which I take up against you, even lamentation, O house of Israel. Now when he says hear, that he's, he's saying pay close attention, listen up, listen up. Meaning that something very important is going to be said. The virgin of Israel is fallen, she shall no more rise, she is forsaken upon her land. And there is none to raise her up. Well, up to this point, uh, Israel had remained unconquered. That all just about to change. Israel now will be conquered. For thus saith the Lord God, the city that went out by a thousand shall leave a hundred, and that which went forth by a hundred shall leave ten to the house of Israel. In other words, he's talking about uh, Israel's military, Israel's army, ninety uh, percent are going to perish. They're going to be totally defeated and only 10%. Those are going to be the walking wounded that are going to remain alive. So uh, they're going to be devastated. For he saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek you me, and you shall live. But seek not Bethel, nor enter into Gilgal, and pass not to Beersheba. For Gilgal shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel shall come to naught. These were the people that... Uh, we're practicing every kind of ungodly cult uh, religions. Seek the Lord and you shall live, lest he break out like a fire in the house of Joseph and devour it. And there be none to quench it in Bethel. Ye who turn judgment to wormwood and leave off righteousness in the earth. Well, wormwood was poison. And the point that he's making is your judgment. Your judgment is poison. You're not judging according to the righteousness of the Word of God, but like like what's happening today in America, throughout the world. They're making their own judgments according to every man does what he believes he wants to do. I don't even want to use that word, what he believes right in his own eyes, because they don't care about right or wrong anymore. Oh, seek him that maketh the seven stars of Orion and turneth the shadow of death into the morning and maketh the day dark with night, and calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. He's talking about Orion, the this uh, stairway to the stars. And it's referred to the seven stars that the Lord named. Why did he name them? Well, he was the one that made them. And he, they're talking about God's greatness here. Uh, he, he decided to make day light dark night. And uh, here, where it says that poureth them out, and calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. In other words, God is awesome. God is great. And they're telling them to seek the face of one omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. That strength that is spoiled against the strong, so that the spoiled shall come against the fortress. They hate him that rebuketh the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. In other words, it's just like here in America today. They hate those that are speaking the truth. They hate those that are judging righteously. As I told that state senator yesterday, he said, uh, well, I'm a lawyer, and we have a Supreme Court, and according to uh, the Supreme Court, that 
heartbeat pill is, is unconstitutional. So what do I do? I'm a lawyer. What do I do? I said, very simple. Here's what you do. Acts 5.29 says, we must obey God rather than man. That's what you do. Do you have a problem with that? No, I don't have a problem with that. Well, then do it. Right? I said, as far as that court, they're supreme only in the rebellion. They're supreme only in their sin against God. And I said, they've become nothing less than black robe whores and prostitutes. And you know it. And he agreed. He agreed. For as much as, therefore, as you're treading upon a poor, and take from the burdens of the wheat, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not dwell in them, and you have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink wine of them. I know of your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. They afflict the just, and they take a bribe, and they turn aside the poor in the gate from the right. Where do they turn them? They turn them to the left. Always everything that God's Word, the Bible, has to say with right has to deal with righteousness, and the left has to deal with unrighteousness. Therefore the prudent shall keep silence in the time for it is an evil time. What he's saying is the prudent man knows, he understands that, that you can't get the word of God. You can't teach the Bible to people that are unsaved. You can't, you can't teach them. The first thing you have to do before uh, you can get them to understand there's got to be repentance. You've got to bring them to the point where they repent of their sin and then there's forgiveness. Then, once there's repentance, then once there's forgiveness, then they can understand the Word of God. Until then, it's, until then, it's just pure foolishness and all they want to do is argue with you or mock you. Uh, any street preacher knows about that. They run into those people all the time. Or all you have to do is turn on your television set. It's all over the news. It's everywhere. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as you have spoken. Hate the evil and love the good and establish judgment. He's telling them, you better establish judgment. You better have men who are righteous enough and women to have judgment, to pass judgment. And the gate, the gate is where they did business. So it may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. In other words, he might spare them. America, listen folks, don't think that any nation in this world has sinned more than America. They haven't. America's sins, our sewers run red with the blood of our children. Our public school centers are nothing uh, but centers to take. Uh, there are hotbeds of cultural Marxism and sodomy. The public school systems have become exactly, exactly what they were prophesied to be by Martin Luther, great gates of hell. And that's why so many people, that's why homeschooling continues to grow. But you see, when he's talking about being judging here, you, when, are, when you're challenged or when you hear people say something like, well, I'm offended what you said about the public school system, you are to make a judgment. Amen. You're to speak up, you see, Amen. to remain in silence. Abe Lincoln said, for, those, for men to remain silent when they should speak up makes cowards of men and destroys nations. So when you remain silent, in a way you've already spoken. What you've said is, I don't have the courage or the integrity to defend righteousness. Then I want you to turn over in your Bible to the 37th Psalm. Thirty-seven Psalm, starting with verse twenty-seven. Depart from me, or depart from evil, and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not the saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. God loves for His saints to judge. We're to judge good from evil. The world keeps out there trying to tell you, and by the way, you'll always hear this, I'm offended by that. I'm, you know, This is something that uh, the communists used to justify their sin and to try to silence Christians. 
is something that the, the Muslims use to try to justify beheading people, is that uh, we've been offended. Well, you see, you can be offended too. Any time that they, that they speak in this sinful antichrist message, you need to be bolder than the opposition. You need to let them know, in those uncertain terms, that now you're offended, you see. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not the saints. They are preserved forever. The seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart, and none of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Let me read that again. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, or condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord, and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land, when the wicked are cut off, and thou shalt see it. And I have seen the wicked in great power, and spreading himself like a green tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not, yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Now listen, you see, when you judge, you judge in accordance with the Word of God. When you judge in accordance with the Word of God, then your judgment will stand, you see. Mm -hmm. Because at the end, at the end, everybody stands before God. God stands before nobody, you see. Right. So all of these people out there that tell you, I don't believe in God. Uh, a fellow was telling me this morning about a guy he knew who said that one of these days he was going to uh, punch God. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. He's going to get smarter for that. <laughs> and, uh, well, not really like, wait a minute. You know, remember Joseph Stalin? He said he was going to rise up and defeat God and sit in his throne. And that's what Satan said. Remember old Lucifer? Isaiah chapter 14? Oh, yeah. He's going to, he said he's going to knock God off his throne. He was going to become God. Um, I don't think so. Anyhow, what you just read here is the Lord loves judgment. Now, here, you all do hear again Matthew chapter 7. Turn to Matthew 7. And uh, verses 1 through 6, when we hear. Uh, and verse 1. Now, verse 1 means exactly what it mean, what it says. It means exactly what it says. Most people don't pay attention. Judge not that you be not judged. What he's saying is don't make judgments on the assumption that uh, you won't be held to the same standard, but on the assumption that you will be held to the same standards. That's what it means. Judge not that you be not judged. Don't think that, that uh, by not judging you won't be judged. And don't think that by some assumption that you will not, you'll be held to lower standards. You see, often, folks, you may have experienced this, other people's sins seems to be worse than their own. Right? We have a way of justifying them, right? We can do that. I can ask some of you to tell me about your latest sins, and then, no, we won't do that. No. Maybe, I can. <laughs> Maybe we'll catch up with you later. At the confession, uh, uh, <coughs> for with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged, and with the measure you make, you shall be measured to you again. Why beholdest thou the mouth that is in thy brother's eye? But considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye. Or how wilt thou say to the brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thy eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. When he says brother here, he's talking about a fellow Christian, a fellow believer. You see. Now there are those who will tell you, that, first of all, we are not to judge outside the church, only within. And then others will say, no, we're only to judge uh, within the church and not outside. Well, neither is true. We're to judge everything. Everything. Amen. The hypocrite first cast out the beam of thine own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote of thy brother's eye. Now, he goes on to say, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast you your pearls for a swine, for they trample them under the feet, and turn again, 
And Brent, you what goes back to what we said before, what he's talking about here is that to try to teach the Word of God to those that are lost until they have repented, uh, folks, it's just will receive forgiveness. It's just not going to register. In fact, turn over to Acts chapter 16. I want to read verses 11 through 18. Well, I'm just going to jump down and, and uh, start with verse 14. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple in the city Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, and she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized, her and her household, she besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us well. Again, she is she's acknowledging that uh, the apostles here are judges, you see. Christians are to judge. And that's what she's saying. If you have judged me, if you have judged me uh, to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house. And it came to pass as we went uh, to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Now this woman was possessed with a spirit. And here Paul made the judgment. He made a call. Here was his call. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which showed unto us the way of salvation. Uh, down there in front of that preterm abortion mill some years ago, when we had a woman who was demon-possessed, a demon-possessed woman, she was, she was speaking in garbling. Uh, and I had laid hands upon her, and I, I think I told you all about this before. Uh, no one was any more surprised than when I was. When I, I laid hands and I said, the Lord rebuke you, that woman literally shot up off the ground. Now, you know, you folks know that I'm a very, very fundamentalist Baptist, and I thought, thought things like that only happened to Pentecostals. You know, where they only saw you know, one open and a holler. But I'm going to tell you, uh, you had all of these Satanists lined up along that sidewalk, and they had been very noisy, and all of a sudden you could have heard a pin drop. And that woman rolled up that wall, but when she rolled down, she shouted out. She was gurgling, gargling, but then she shouted out to the Satanists, Listen to the man of God, listen to the man of God. And uh, that's when that Roger come busting out the doors, the, the big uh, Cleveland cop who worked uh, is a security guard there who I had had many a, uh, disagreements with and he come busting out that door and he said I'll never stand against you again because I know that woman I've known she's been demon possessed for years and I just saw so now I know you are a man of God and I'm not and he quit that right at that very moment he went upstairs and he quit and so here now you have this woman and she's walking behind him and it's starting to, and she keeps shouting this out, and it's starting to get old, you know. And it's starting to wear on Paul and the apostles. They're hearing her. Uh, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Well, and this did, she, she did many days. And Paul began being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when our masters saw this, the hope of their gains was gone. They caught Paul and Silas and drew them to the marketplace and to the ruler. In other words, it's kind of, they were kind of like prosperity preachers, you know. Uh, they were making the money, they were marketing off of this woman, and now they, they, that demon was cast out of her. That spirit, I should say, was cast out of her. And then now, uh, she wasn't making them any money. And that's why they brought them to, long story short, you all know the story. They were beaten and thrown in prison, and then uh, then they said, all right, you can go now. And they said, oh, no, we're Roman citizens. You beat us without a trial, without a hearing. And uh, that really put the fear in the, ch in, uh, the captain of the guard and, the, and those that were in charge, because that placed them in a position of, of getting worse treatment, going to prison themselves. But anyhow... Um, 
Turn over to Isaiah chapter 59. In Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 through 15, you got to say something in here because this uh, is exactly like America today, exactly in so many ways. Verses 7 through 15. And starting with verse 1, uh, as we go through here, you're going to see that common sense in America today has been replaced by common core. And uh, people with character who are able to judge have been replaced by characters unable to judge. That's the status of America today. But you know what that means for us, don't you? That means it's the best time for us to place up crowns in heaven, folks. You see, the darker things are, the brighter our light can shine. And it is. And just like too many people today in the church are sitting on the bench. They never get into the, they never take the field. They never get in to the battle. You don't want to be one of those. You know, I tell you what, the old saying you've heard of, pay me now or pay me later. Well, you can pay them now. You stay in that comfort zone now. You stay in your comfort zone now and you'll pay for it later. You will pay for it later. There's no chance. If you stay in that comfort zone right now and avoid the fight and don't run to the battle, you will absolutely have all of eternity to regret it. That will happen. Now, behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, neither his ear heavy that he cannot hear. In other words, he's telling you this, look, God has none of God's power has been diminished even in Iota. But your iniquities have separated you between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. For your hand. You know, people want to know why God won't answer their prayers. Because they don't repent of their sin exactly. often. Or they don't even acknowledge their sin. Right. And you want to know why God hasn't forgiven it? For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongues have muttered perverseness. You know, how many times have you heard people say, you know, I, I, I would never, ever, ever partake or have part of an abortion. Uh, but I'm not going to judge those people that will. You just did. <laughs> yeah. and, and you just joined them. Your statement. And what he's talking about, your hands are covered with blood. Look. Just read Proverbs chapter 24, verses 10, 11, and 12. What does that mean? It means if you're not doing anything to stop it, then you're helping it along the way. None calleth for justice, nor pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. <coughs> they hatch cockatrice eggs, and we the spider's web. He that eateth their eggs, dieth, and he that is crushed breaketh out into a viper. In other words, those that go along by their doctrine and live by their creed, yeah, they're on their way to hell. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the acts of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they haste to shed innocent blood. Sound like America today? Yeah. Sound like NARO, sound like Planned Parenthood, sound like the entire Democratic Party. Yep. Yep. And the thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths, whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. No judgment. There's no judgment. They failed to judge sin. They failed to judge between good and evil, between righteous and unrighteousness. Therefore is judgment far from us, neither does justice overtake us. In other words, he's saying because of their sins, because they have failed, they don't get any judgment, justice now. They, they don't have uh, just judgment. We wait for light, but behold, obscurity, for brightness, but we walk in darkness. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday, as in the night. We are 
in desolate places as dead men. We roar like bears and mourn like sore doves. We look for judgment, but there is none, for salvation, but it is far from us. See what he's saying? They're begging for justice. Today, there's so much injustice in America, so much injustice in America today. People that have morals, people that have values, people that have a conscience, people say, look, I will not in any way, shape, or form take play part in any sodomite marriages or any of these things. They get penalized. They get put out of business. And those in the federal government under the Obama regime, when they call a whistleblower, in other words, if they should tell the truth and expose corruptness, they get fired. But under that corrupt criminal regime, those that are lying, stealing, and killing, they're the ones that get rewarded. That's America today. Now, why is that? You see, folks, because... So many people have been convinced that we Christians aren't to judge. We're to kind of just sit back and don't say anything and don't do anything. Be you a doer of the word, not a hearer only. Deceiving your own self. Amen. Deceiving your own Amen. self. Whenever Amen. you fail, whenever somebody mocks the good Lord or, or mocks the word of God, Speak and up. you fail... To reprove that person or refute that person, you have just failed. You have failed God and you failed yourself. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displaced him that there was no judgment. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. Do you understand what he's telling you? God was very displeased with the fact that there was no judgment. And he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness is in stain. Of course, that's the Lord Jesus he's referring to. I want you to turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, just one verse. And that's verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and there be no divisions among you, that you uh, be perfectly joined together in the same mind. The word subjecus in the, in the Greek means in the same judgment. It means having the very same moral values. And that's, that's who you are to fellowship with and be with people that are on the very same moral level than you are. Either, uh, or people are telling me, and I, I see this, they want to make friends for people, they want to fellowship with people that are totally, uh, and it's very hard, folks, even with, with relatives, even with family members. How many times have you heard someone say, can't we all just get along? The answer to that is no, absolutely not. I had a lady say that to me one time. Well, can't we all just get along? I said, not according to the Bible, and it's always right. And that, like, see, now she, she had parroted that over and over and over, but never, never got answered, never got challenged. Right? And so, here, now be seated, you brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus, that you all speak the same thing, and there be no divisions. What is it that you're to speak? What's the Word of God? That's what he's telling you about. You see, when he, when he talks about judgment, that, that in the same mind and the same judgment, the judgment, your judgments are all made, predicated upon, right here, the Word of God, right? Right. And then if you go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, I want to read verses 12 through 16 here. 
Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God.